Welcome back. Checking in with some domestic headlines now and a new government initiative designed to prevent unsuspecting Americans from consuming propaganda. The State Department has officially allocated $40 million to counter what it refers to as foreign disinformation from countries like Russia, China and Iran. RT's Rachel Blevins joins us now from the RT American Newsroom with the latest. Rachel, what are we learning about this new plan? Well, Anya, the United States is now publicly taking a stand in the, quote, war on propaganda, and it has pledged $40 million to combat propaganda from foreign countries that are often criticized by the U.S. The State Department released the transcript from a press briefing that was apparently held off camera on Tuesday, and in it, a spokesperson said the funding is part of the Global Engagement Center's effort to combat foreign disinformation. The statement specifically said that the U.S. intends to counter disinformation and propaganda from Russia, Iran, and China that is directed to foreign audiences. The State Department claimed these efforts would be accomplished by deploying technology to provide early warnings of foreign disinformation, analyzing audiences that are most susceptible to disinformation, and working closely with local organizations social media influencers and journalists to produce content. Now, the State Department's claim that it plans to develop partnerships with key local social media influencers to produce content to reach critical audiences is notable, considering the fact that in early 2018, the United States indicted 13 Russian nationals and three entities for conducting illegal, quote, information warfare during the 2016 election. They claimed this was done by intentionally influencing users on popular social media platforms like Facebook. Now, the latest announcement on combating foreign propaganda comes after the Department of Homeland Security recently claimed it is still seeing ongoing and persistent efforts from Russia, China, and Iran to influence both the 2018 midterms and the 2020 presidential election these disinformation and misinformation campaigns on social media and new media, uh, that sort of activity has, has uh, persisted. We continue to see Russians and increasingly Iranian and other Chinese actors continue to use social media to influence the American public, to draw, uh, it, it, sow discord and, and, and increase divisiveness. That's something that, that is probably just a, a tool of the trade for them right now. So we continue to see that activity. So while the United States claims it is committed to combating foreign disinformation, this campaign has left many wondering if this is just another example of the U.S. trying to dominate Russia, China, and Iran by controlling the media narrative. In Washington, Rachel Blevins, RT. With social media in question earlier today, we were joined by Wilmer Leon, host of the Critical Hour on Sputnik Radio. Uh, it's a uh, organization within the Department of State that's supposed to be forward-looking and counteracting uh, in supposed interference from outside governments. Um, Forty million dollars that has been uh, appropriated. To my knowledge, the money has yet to be spent, and here we are, six days before the midterm election and they haven't even really begun to do anything that they say they're supposed to do. So this really seems to be a waste of time. And it's interesting that we're talking about this on Halloween because we're, we really seem to be chasing ghosts and goblins, nothing really substantive and real. And by countering disinformation, it sounds like the State Department is actually engaging in the same type of activity it accuses these foreign powers of well, doing. Well, that's a great point because what fails to get articulated in this discussion is that this is what the United States has been engaged in since the 1950s. That's how we overthrew Mohammed Mossadegh in Iran. That's what we did in Nicaragua. That's what we did in El Salvador and Honduras. The United States has been engaged in these types of of activities uh, through the CIA and through other government agencies for a very, very long time. So the governments that we are now accusing of being engaged in this, basically they're taking a, a page out of the American playbook.
RT correspondent Rachel Blevins recently had her Facebook page removed because you know the company didn't give her a clear reason but it was essentially part of an effort to shut down accounts which were accused of adopting Russian tactics or spreading information even though they were American accounts so it seems to be a pretty slippery slope well it is a very slippery slope and you use the word losing control which is interesting because when you look at the millions of tweets and posts a day that are on Twitter and Facebook and then you look at the very small subset of those that are allegedly tied to foreign sources it's it's a drop in the it's a drop in the bucket instead of the United States paying attention uh, to Russia and to the Kremlin, the United States needs to be paying attention to the Republicans and Chris Kobach in terms of if you really want to understand what's impacting the outcome of American elections, it's the cross-check program that Chris Kobach has been engaged in. It's the exact match program that was implemented by the Attorney General in Georgia. It's the program requiring that Native Americans have exact street addresses on their IDs in North Dakota. Those are the things, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the data, when you look at the facts, mm -hmm. those are the things that are impacting American elections, and they're impacting American elections because they're disenfranchising people of color. Right, and in some of these states, the number of people that were taken off the voter rolls by these programs is actually more than the number or than the margin of victory. In Michigan, for example, Trump won by less votes than people were removed. So you can see exactly how this policy would contribute to the kinds of... of, of Michigan, Arizona, Ohio, North Carolina, there are about seven states that fall into the category. And that you yet just Russia and China are blamed for swinging and the outcome. And where are the weapons the of mass destruction, by the way? Talking about misinformation and disinformation. It's a good question. Wilmer Leon will have to leave it there. He's the host of the Critical Hour on Sputnik News. Hey, YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.